Representative Taylor, thank you so much. I didn't mean to, uh, to interrupt your introduction. I, 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 I hope you would have said some nice things, and uh, thank you so much. Look, I, I spent 12 years in the Florida legislature, and so I know what this time of year is like. And for Representative Taylor to come on out and uh, spend some time with us this afternoon is really significant. They don't get much time at home on the weekends, and he's been doing a fantastic job since he was first elected in 2008, and he had some big shoes to fill. He had to fill the shoes of my good friend Joyce Cusack, who actually nominated me, placed my name in nomination as chair of the Democratic National Committee. After uh, President Obama asked me to uh, take on this job. And so uh, it's wonderful to be here in Daytona Beach. Uh, this is a community that has a long tradition of helping to make sure that Democrats get elected across this country and that, uh, and that we make sure that we have a strong voice on behalf of people who need a voice in this community and across the state of Florida. And it really is wonderful to be back home in the Sunshine State. I really am so glad to be able to have the opportunity to spend some time talking with you about what's at stake in this election. We have a national spotlight on Florida over the next few days, and it's been that way all week. Uh, as we progress through the general election, that there will be a white hot spotlight on Florida, and that is gonna be incredibly important because we are really one of the keys to Barack Obama's victory. And this afternoon, I wanna focus on the future, uh, Florida's future and our country's future. On Tuesday night, President Obama delivered his third State of the Union address. He spoke about moving the country forward, and he outlined a bold blueprint for an America built to last, with an economy focused on American manufacturing, American energy, skills for American workers, and American values. Now, as the President says, this is a make-or-break moment for the middle class, against whom the game has been rigged for decades. Now, at stake is the very survival of the basic American promise that if you work hard, you can do well enough to raise a family, own a home, and have some savings when you retire. The defining issue and the most urgent challenge of our time is how to keep that promise alive. Now, we can either settle for a country where a shrinking number of people do phenomenally well, while most Americans barely get by, or we can build a nation where everyone gets a fair shot, everyone does their fair share, and everyone plays by the same rules. I can tell you that I'm working with my Democratic colleagues in Congress and this President to find solutions to meet the challenges that Americans face, no matter where they live or what their background is. And I know that every single person in this room today shares this common goal, to move forward from the failed policies of the past and put our country on the path to progress. That's a goal that President Obama shares with all of us. Three years ago, when the President entered office, he did so with a determination to change America for the better. Remember? That was a historic day. The, the, the election night, to, uh, to almost four years ago, was pretty incredible feeling. With his leadership and with the support of leaders like all of you, we've already begun to see what that change looks like. Change is passing the Affordable Care Act to finally make health care affordable and available to every single American. Every single American. In doing so, the President extended Medicaid eligibility to millions more individuals and helped to reduce health disparities for 41 million African Americans by expanding access to preventative care. And now insurance companies can't drop us or deny us coverage based on pre-existing conditions. Change is following through on the President's promise to end the war in Iraq and bring home all of our servicemen and women. Many said that President Obama couldn't do it, but he got it done. He got it done. Change is signing the Recovery Act into law to help get our economy back on track. As a result, we've seen 22 consecutive months of private sector job growth, adding more than 3.1 million jobs. Now, this law also kept 1.4 million African Americans out of poverty through tax credits, improvements in unemployment insurance, and relief for retirees, for veterans, and people with disabilities. Change is the passage of Wall Street reform to ensure that Wall Street plays by the same rules as Main Street and to rein in the excesses of corporate greed. It's keeping our promises to America's veterans and military spouses by providing for our service members not only when they're in harm's way, but also after they've returned home. the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act to ensure that women receive equal pay for an equal day's work. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow we celebrate
celebrate the three-year anniversary of this bill being signed into law, which was the first bill that President Obama signed into law as President of the United States. Change is providing emergency loans to the U.S. automobile industry, which saved more than 1.4 million American jobs. Now, that was a very good deal. Had, he, had any number of Republicans had their way, they would have simply let Detroit go bankrupt. But the President refused to let that happen. Change is, is increasing the maximum Pell Grant size to $5,550 and extending funding for historically black colleges and universities and minority serving institutions by more than two and a half billion dollars. Two and a half billion dollars over the next 10 years. Change is recognizing our nation's diverse needs rather than pushing extreme policies and divisive rhetoric when we know that America can do better. And change is standing up last month to stubborn Republicans in Congress over the payroll tax cut and refusing to let taxes go off on 160 million hardworking Americans. That, my friends, is what change has looked like with President Obama in the White House. Now still, change has not come fast enough for too many Americans. And I know that, and you know that, and the President knows it too, and it hasn't come fast enough for him either. The fact is, it took years to get us into this hole. And we've got more work to do. We've got more work to do, and we need to do it together. That's why it's so critical that we re-elect President Obama, so that he can keep fighting for all of us. Rome wasn't built in a day, this hole wasn't dug in one day, and we aren't going to get out of here in one day. We've got to make sure we remember that. One more year! One more year! One more year! isn't happy with all the change that we've built together, are they? No. They want to take their ball and go home. Yeah, right. <laughs> if it's up to it's them, home. If, they, if it's up to them, <laughs> if it's up to them, that historic day in, in, in 2008, when we all felt such euphoria, do you remember the feeling you had on election night? I will never forget the feeling I had on election night in 2008. But let's keep something in mind. That was historic. It was an incredible feeling. It was an incredible opportunity. But we can't, it's not going to be historic again. History only happens one time. What 2012 is, is personal. It's personal. Because I don't know about you, although I do, I think I have a feeling that I do know about you. I'm not going back. I'm not letting them undo all the change that Barack Obama has brought us and all the promise that we have to turn things around in the future. And we know what will happen if we allow them to drag us back. That is why it's so critical. We can't allow the other side to turn the clock back on progress. We see it every day on the campaign trail. Republicans have no new ideas for helping working and middle class families get ahead. They do have two things. Any number of special interest groups on speed dial, and an absolute fixation on seeing this president fail at any cost. Because they only care about one job, Barack Obama's. Democrats care about American jobs. Barack Obama is in there swinging for the middle class and for working families. They have already, and they will some more. They're going to throw everything they have at us in this election, and we're already seeing it now. Just look at their efforts to suppress the vote in November. Yeah. Now, as many of you know, last year, Florida Republicans were successful, and certainly uh, the representative knows this better than anyone else. But last year, they were successful in enacting new changes to our state's voting laws that restrict access to the polls and impose intimidating rules on voter registration. These changes reduce early voting from 14 days to 8. They specifically eliminate early voting on the Sunday before Election Day. Oh, I'm sure that's a real coincidence. Uh -huh. And they've driven out key voter registration groups like the League of Women Voters with the new restrictions. There's no coincidence here. Republicans are deliberately trying to skew the 2012 election in their favor before a single vote is cast. They know that they don't have the issues that, on, on their side. They can't win this election on the merits, so they have to rig it. They have to try to set it up so that they can let voters, that, so that they can let uh, legislators choose their own voters. Right. Just look at which communities are hit the hardest by the new restrictions here in Florida. In the 2008 presidential election, nearly 54% of Florida's African American voters who overwhelmingly supported President Obama cast their ballots at early voting sites. On the Sunday before the election, African American voters comprised 32% of the statewide turnout. Florida Republicans know that a reduction in African American turnout might improve their odds in November 
And that's exactly why they have moved to eliminate early voting on that day. But we can't let them stop us. Are we going to let them stop us? No! No. Boy, that's a nice, strong no. no. We know that we have to simply move forward as a nation. Keep moving forward. President Obama has often said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. And it's possible when we all remember this fundamental truth of our democracy. It is possible. Change doesn't come from the top down. It comes from the bottom up. That, unless you're Republicans. <laughs> that means that we can't create the change that we see without each of you sharing the information that you see here today within your own community and making sure that their voices and their votes count this November. When we do this, we will continue the change that we started from the moment we sent President Obama to the White House, and we will create an America built to last for our children and for countless generations to come. Thank you so much, and all the best